uh, thanks everyone for attending our um, event here, um, 145 on Thursday, May 28th. I'd like to introduce uh, Chemscape and specifically uh, Mike Phibbs, who's the uh, the president of the organization. We're going to be talking about uh, what Chemscape has to offer um, from a technology standpoint when it comes to uh, chemicals, hazards, controls, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then how you know our partnership between our two organizations um, uh, works uh, between iTrack and uh, Chemscape and, and their products like the Champ Boil. I'll hand it over to Mike to introduce himself. Okay, thank you very much, folks. I do appreciate uh, all of the dealings that I have had with uh, iTrack and, and Neo Systems. Um, certainly our area of uh, specialty is uh, we write a lot of safety data sheets. And if you write enough of anything, I think I personally have written 10,000. Um, you start to learn how to uh, do it well and uh, how to tear things apart and reconstitute them. Certainly, um, there's a lot of complexity, especially since uh, GHS or Women's 2015. Uh, the safety data sheets have seeming to get longer and longer and longer. Um, the um, a lot of chemical hazards are wrapped in mystery. Um, there's way too much text in many of those safety data sheets and often too little substance or action so that people can actually work with these things. Oops, wrong button. Just in case you don't know that I'm old, here's my picture. Uh, I am the founder. We founded uh, uh, Deerfoot Consulting in 2000 and um, the predecessor to Chemscape, which was MSTS Binders Inc. in 2003. Um, certainly our specialty area is dealing with hazardous chemicals. We don't play in, uh, in other places. Uh, we feel, certainly feel we could, but uh, to me, there's a lot of other people that, that can do that. And, and a lot of the things that we do uh, really help a lot of our clients and, and we can kind of go through some of these things. But uh, just managing chemicals in general is, is certainly a monumental challenge once you have uh, multiple locations and multiple uh, chemicals being used and applications and how they're used in a lot of different ways. Um, and there's, uh, if you're going to take care of uh, your reputation and liabilities and, and worker health and sustainability and all the different permits and codes of practice and exposure control plans that you need, then uh, um, it does add up to a, a fair bit of um, effort on your part. Excuse me. Having multiple, uh, many employees, um, different work processes. Um, there is uh, certainly continual risk and extreme uh, uh, complexity if uh, it will eat you up if you uh, let it. You really need a system to deal with that. In the news every day, there's uh, Certainly potential for serious incidents and we, we get to read about them regularly. Um, and certainly there are, uh, it's, it's certainly well known that there are more deaths now from occupational disease than there are from occupational incidents. Uh, that's a trend that's been um, uh, going in that direction for a long time. I don't know if, uh, you know, is safety just that much better and we're not paying attention to health? Or is the lag time associated with occupational disease? Uh, is that an issue? Um, there's a lot of things that are there. Uh, you do know that regu the regu regulators are taking notice of, uh, of this trend though. And um, a lot of the regulations are tightening up and the expectations are tightening up. There's a lot of details that you need to take care of. Uh, yes, there's SDS management, and you know, we have one application that uh, we do that. Um, but uh, just keeping all that straight in all your in your different locations and making sure you have access. Uh, but other issues are labeling and storage, and um, what the hazards are, and uh, TDG or transportation requirements. What do you do if you have a spill, and and you know occupational health 
uh, chemical inventories and certainly your hazard assessments. Certainly everybody knows that in uh, pretty well every jurisdiction, it's required that you have uh, do hazard assessments. Some are more prescriptive than others. Uh, BC and California are certainly the, uh, uh, the leaders. I, I don't know what it is about the West Coast, but uh, uh, certainly uh, we do lots of work with lots of clients in BC and we have a few clients in uh, that have operations in California too. And uh, those things, um, it just takes, um, I think they are leading the charge as to um, what the hazard communication and risk assessments uh, are going to be required for some time. In order to manage a great deal of data, uh, you certainly need some tools uh, to keep on top of um, anything that you're going to be doing, but uh, certainly that's that's true with chemical management. It also can be very time consuming um, if you try to do these things manually. Um, yes, there's people can do an awful lot of things, but uh, uh, you know, perhaps uh, they could be uh, a better use for them in, in other places. Uh, we have two tiers of products, our SDS binders, uh, which is, you know, a, um, it's not a basic, it is a, uh, it's still a premium product. Uh, with that, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, WorkSafe BC, um, and we all know from WEMAS 2015 that the federal requirement was reduced to uh, eliminate the need for three-year updates within your SDS management system. However, in BC, Saskatchewan, Northwest Territories, and none of the territories, and we have clients in those places, um, they still have retained the three-year rule. Uh, so we have retained the three-year rule. And, and um, if there's ever any audits or questions, um, our clients can point the officers directly to uh, this is when the uh, last date that this data sheet was checked. Um, with our CHAMP, our, our Chemical Hazard Assessment Management Program, uh, we hazard rank or hazard band chemicals. Um, the clients need to do a little bit of input, and I'll show you this in a second, just so that we'll get some risk assessments, um, chemical approvals that include a lot of uh, health risks, a um, predict actionable icons and uh, recommend controls. And there's obviously um, ongoing training because there's ongoing learning that needs to happen. So the uh, SDS binders comes with a mobile app. Um, and, and many of our clients, especially now uh, in the last couple of years, many have just gone straight to the mobile app because they're almost their, or their employees carry smartphones anyways. And so as a result, uh, you can see the mobile app in this photo here beside the uh, laptop. And, and, you know, the laptop certainly is, uh, that's what our SDS binders application looks like. Uh, you're able to sort this in a number of different ways to find those documents. You're able to find different health hazards. Um, you're able to uh, do a little bit of training on some of the uh, health hazards and find different regulations that you need to be concerned with. So with um, these are the GHS symbols, right? And, and actually these, this structure um, that GHS and, and, you know, which was um, the classifications were used in Women's 2015, but this structure uh, of the new safety data sheets and the fact that that there's classifications that are very specific, uh, and you know each of the classifications or almost all of them will provide uh, some of these images, uh, which which provide the classification links, um, but each of the individual classifications relate to um, specific hazard statements. And those specific hazard statements are really the, the key to employee training because if they can understand how to use them and they're really quite understandable, um, you know, there's hazard statements and precautionary statements associated with every classification. And uh, if you are a systems thinker, then you can build upon this and you can create systems and train your, uh, and train your people. 
Um, so our our process, and so the the one of the differences within Champ is that we recommend or we associate um, with hazard statements and other doc other statements on the safety data sheet itself that we record. We associate different actionable properties. You can see here uh, that there are um, safety glasses, uh, face shields, uh, respirators, gloves. Um, you know, nitron gloves, apron and um, uh, coveralls that are required. You can still access the safety data sheet and you can still access the, access the emergency response guide. The emergency response guide would be accessible from, the, if you see the number 2810, um, that would be the UN number that's on this safety data sheet and, and also any of the workplace labels. I mentioned the um, the three-year rule and how we deal with that. You can see with, uh, under the issue date, okay, up under the issue date on the top bar where there's the little dotted line. If I could, uh, within our system, if you roll over that, that will identify the last time that that data sheet was checked. So that's here on purpose. So after we have the SDS and we enter all of this, lots of the metadata associated with it. We do ask some of the questions of how the product will be used because we can't just make those assumptions. Of how often you'll use that product, um, what quantity of the product will be used. And so this does not have to be, uh, this does not have to be, uh, you know, a great hunt and peck for you. This is certainly small, medium, large, which means milligrams, kilograms, or tons per day. Um, mills, liters, or cubic meters per day. And then uh, we'll also ask uh, what controls are in place. These uh, really are fairly simple. Um, we got permission from the International Labor Organization to use their concepts. And so these are the inputs for the International Labor Organization with the exception of the last one. Uh, the last one we just, um, we use that to predict other things. So. One thing that we do, we automatically hazard band or hazard rank are put into these different hazard categories. Um, and all of these are associated with the classification on the G on the document, SDS document. And certainly hazard band E, these things are contain proven carcinogens and respiratory sensitizers. Uh, D is a little bit less hazardous. Right, so to very toxic on single exposure, possible cancer, repro reproductive effects, uh, corrosives to skin, uh, severely irritating and skin sensitizers. Um, A and B are irritants and a little bit worse than irritants, but uh, pretty mild effects. Uh, so really in our uh, chemical approval system, we have some clients that uh, they just state that if they were to uh, have a, a chemical that is just an irritant, and we're still going to predict a, a, some controls that they would rubber stamp it. So we just enable them to rubber stamp these things and, and automatically approve anything that's an A or a B. So the this is the uh, risk matrix associated with uh, this control banding application. Actually, in our application, we don't actually show the uh, risk matrix, but I'll show you why. So this um, that hazard band A, B, C, D, E um, lines up this way. The quantity, dustiness, and volatility um, is aligned on the bottom. And so from that, uh, we're able to uh, the, uh, predict uh, what risks are there. Uh, the beauty of this is that I, like many of the people that are probably listening, have attended very many risk um, conversations and you use a risk matrix and people will try to debate forever to manipulate a risk matrix. Uh, this risk matrix can't be manipulated. Uh, how, you manip how you manipulate this is that you substitute a less toxic substance 
Uh, we do have an application for that, but that's a little more detailed discussion. So with that risk comes this is advice of how you should work with this chemical. So expert advice, actually I'll just, it's a little bit larger here. These are the four control approaches. Um, start with green or low natural ventilation. Uh, this does include some good management practices, but really just make sure that the air is flowing around uh, the worker. Uh, try, you know, if he has to stick his head into a closet, make sure that, you know, there's some air circulation and or, you know, put a fan on it. Uh, medium risk will be local exhaust ventilation. A uh, high risk means that this should be contained in your process. We have documentation to explain these things too. And extreme risk is uh, containment plus expert advice. Now, uh, sometimes that does require substitution. There, there are actually a significant number of chemicals that you might consider as consumer products that actually fall into uh, um, a hazard group A and requiring expert advice. Um, there's a lot of things out there that you can buy off the shelf that are still extremely toxic. This shows um, what a worker will see if they go into the website and, and they look at the um, approve or this is the, the find SDS website, but the um, this is for xylene. And you will see that the predicted control is orange. We only use blue for uh, current controls. And so hopefully you can see that uh, in this situation, um, they have, uh, they do have that current control um, and they list the, the gloves. More um, as important below are the minimum exposure controls that that employer has identified. And so you'll see that they're always supposed to be wearing safety glasses, safety boots, hard hat, no open fires. They're not supposed to smoke, eat, drink, touch stuff. Uh, this was before COVID. Um, and uh, don't pour these things down the drain. Don't walk through this stuff. Uh, you should have a way to wash your hands. Call somebody if there's a problem and dispose of or remove uh, contaminated clothing. In all, we use... Uh, about 150 different uh, icons. Most of these are ISO based. Uh, certainly all of those PPE ones that are there are. Some of the spill ones are. The fire and first aid ones, those are all um, uh, ISO quality, so they're standardized. The engineering controls, we drew those ourselves just so that uh, um, we recognize there's a picture superiority effect that people can actually remember things far better if they um, associate it with a picture rather than with with uh, uh, a long string of text. So um, this is one of the outputs that we have. Um, it's called a smart chart. We registered that trademark. Uh, this identifies that there's, you know, this worker is working with these five chemicals today, or it's on a task or a project, or this is all they have at this particular location. And it identifies the chemical name, uh, what, the, what the chemical is used for, the different hazard classes. Uh, then there is the hazard group. That goes back to that A, B, C, D, E hazard banding. Uh, we've done a, uh, a numerical ranking based on ingredients and the ingredients also in the hazard band so that we can uh, identify some sort of strength within the D or C classes that you see here, hazard classes you see here. We also identify whether or not this is uh, there are any chemicals listed that have a skin notation and if uh, um, just so you know that means that those chemicals are are readily known to uh, be absorbed through the skin. Uh, then after this, you will see that there are um, our little tinfoil uh, from our logo 
but um, that means you refer to below where these are the minimum controls required. But these are additional exposure controls on the exposure control. Uh, was it second from the right with all the, the blue dots on there? And those blue icons. We are getting more and more uh, sophisticated with those. Now we are. Uh, we do predict if a respirator is needed and, and within a month we will predict we will have what cartridge, respirator cartridges are needed as well. And uh, we will have the what gloves are needed. And so this, these smart tarts are going to change subtly um, just in case we have uh, some of our clients there. Another thing just to identify uh, uh, with what seems to be the issue of the day, we will also identify the health risks associated with that chemical. And since coronavirus is the issue of the day, and you probably you should have a return to work program, uh, coronavirus targets the respiratory system. So since this chemical, which is the AquaGuard 211, um, it identifies that the respiratory system um, is part of the target organs associated, then any of your back to work evaluations should consider whether or not this worker should work with AquaGuard 211. Uh, your occupational health resources, uh, they should be doing this. Uh, this just provides them with the uh, ability to uh, easily identify uh, other things that uh, we need to worry about. Um, OK, we do have a, a few different smart charts available. Uh, certainly, I see that this is one area where eye track and Chemscape can work together very well. Um, we are a deep content assimilator and provider, but really iTrack, they can take these and they can turn these into checklists so that um, you can check and make sure that workers are actually working with them and record that data. We don't record that data. So, if you get a new chemical, we can do that. We can do these assessments and really the major inputs are how much are you going to use um, and how often and you know what controls do you have in place. But we can instantly tell you if the chemical that you are proposing is less toxic than the chemical that you have in place. I know that that is uh, often a management change conundrum for many. So, okay. Uh, certainly those smart charts that, that I showed you and another one that we have uh, that shows uh, what to do in case of a spill or a fire um, are readily available and, and we have clients that use those for pre-planning um, maintenance activities so that they when they get there they don't they can make sure uh, weeks ahead of time that uh, the appropriate equipment is there. They don't have to stop and go back and look. Now, if, if you have a regulator that uh, comes in and tells you, tell me everything you have that contains benzene, you know, our systems can tell you that. Our systems can tell you also how people should be working with them. And the important thing with that, with uh, most of those regulators are that you have a plan that you've you actually have evaluated this. And wouldn't it be an awful lot better to look at the regulator in the eye with confidence and say, come with me, I'll show you. Because Champ can give you that answer in seconds. Another, um, it is a uh, output of Champ. Champ is really a chemical hazard management system. Uh, but one of the outputs is our exposure control plans or WIMIS 2015 programs. Uh, but exposure control plans have uh, some defined needs within 
by WorkSafe BC. They're also, it's also a very good management practice for others so that you understand how to protect all your employees from these, from the hazards that you have. Uh, ammonia, I'm not certain if you recall, but ammonia a couple of years ago killed three people in the arena in Fernie. Um, their exposure control plans are required for those things. Uh, we have a focus tab with uh, four high hazard chemicals. Ammonia is one of them. But I think we have uh, a solid dozen. Certainly we have benzene, COVID, diesel exhaust, uh, LPG, lead, mercury, the list can go on. Uh, one evolution that we're doing right now is that we're putting more and more icons on this. This ammonia focus tab is generally two to three pages or, or these focus tabs. Uh, and we will be hosting a test on an LMS. Uh, that's another potential integration point with um, with iTrack. We do have the uh, and and we certainly push the hierarchy of controls. Um, as far as elimination goes, we can identify that, uh, and we have done this with groups. Uh, no, you can't bring in. Uh, isocyanates. Uh, no, you can't bring in these other things. And so essentially what we do is we just make that so blatantly obvious at the time of the chemical approval that you just, um, you know, it essentially says, and I hope no one takes offense, that you have to have permission from God in order to get approval to use it. Uh, as far as substitution goes, we will uh, have a, a way to look for other cleaners or other corrosion inhibitors or whatever these are within our library and find less toxic substances according to those hazard bands and the extended hazard bands. Uh, we'll predict engineering controls. Uh, we identify administrative controls. Um, and uh, you know the last resort is supposed to be PPE. We really do believe that and we, we try to push that. Uh, I think, Darren, you'd like to uh, take over now? Yeah, I'll just uh, quickly um, talk about, um, you know, our partnership here. And, and, you know, obviously we've, especially in our sales demo, um, so what you're looking at here is the iTrack portal um, and our specifically our sales demo iTrack portal. Um, so forever we've had the, um, it used to be the SDS binders, but uh, it's getting upgraded to the Champ uh, um, product now. So because both iTrack and um, you know, Chemscape builds their uh, technologies on the Microsoft stack. You know, it's it's really simple to, you know, just jump between the two systems because it all uses, um, you know, your Azure AD and single sign on that kind of stuff, right? So, um, you know, the customers, like our shared customers, you know, they do kind of jump back and forth between the two systems, um, you know, either with, you know, links to the portals, links to the, um, you know, SDS sheets, whatever. Um, also, you know, Chemscape does have their LMS, right? So other areas of interest could be, you know, tracking your uh, your training um, process within iTrack, but then launching off into, um, you know, Chemscape's uh, LMS there for, for actually doing the, the training, the exams and all, all that. Um, and then like Mike said, right, when it comes down to, okay, now that you've identified, you know, um, you know, the, the chemicals you can use and the, the hazards associated with it and the controls that need to be in place, you know, are you actually following that, right? And that's the other area where where I track, um, you know, does well is, you know, your inspections then making sure that, um, you know, what you should be doing is what you're you're actually doing. And then uh, if you go sure. to the next slide here, Mike. Um, so the one thing too is is again, you know. Um, I track in Chemscape, you know, we could we could sit here and come up with a bunch of, you know, cool different ways that, you know, our, our two um, platforms can integrate with with one another. But, you know, obviously we would like to hear it from the community too, right? So, you know, if you're a customer of, of both of ours, um, you know, we, we'd like to know how you think our, our two solutions could work more tightly together. And then, you know, we'd be more than happy to entertain that idea and um, you know, maybe even do a, you know, a, a proof of concept um, with your organization. So again, just let us know, um, you know, what, what your ideas are and then, you know, maybe, maybe we can do a project together to get these two systems, you know, working even more efficiently for you. 
And with that, I'll let you um, finish off there, Mike, with you know okay. uh, who you uh, your links and how they contact you and all that. Sure. Okay. Um, well, certainly this is our um, our website. You can contact us. Uh, there's uh, through that you can contact me. Um, you can sign up for a newsletter. Uh, you know, we do provide. Uh, one just went out on um, occupational asthma and different chemicals in your workplace that can affect uh, um, or induce asthma within people. And uh, certainly that um, we cross-reference that with all the chemicals that are uh, with our knowledge of the chemicals that you have in your workplace. I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to speak here. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Darren. Uh, for those attending, if you have any questions, now's the time to ask. Either take yourself off mute and ask the questions or type them in the chat. Uh, we also pasted a link uh, if you'd like to leave us some feedback on this session or others. And otherwise, we have a couple sessions coming up, one with um, Verified Beef Production about using their e-auditing and remote, and then another uh, 2.30 at the same time with Enviro and Zed about their driving training program in iTrack. So if you want to hear from other customers and how they do things, uh, feel free to look at the schedule. Otherwise, yeah, we'll leave it open for a little bit, but thanks for your time.